According to Bankrate.com, the average American spends about 70% of their household income on four different categories. That's housing, transportation, food and groceries, and taxes. So in this video, we're gonna talk about those four major categories as they pertain to living in Denver in 2022 and all of the Denver metro area, really. And keep in mind, a lot of these numbers I'm gonna be thrown at you for those four main categories are gonna be either your averages or your median. So there's gonna be a lot of skews on one side or the other, but it should give you a general idea of what it should cost to live out here if you're planning to move out here or if you just wanna know what it costs to live out here in general. What's going on you guys? Andrew Vasquez-Seno here with eXp Realty out here in Denver, Colorado. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If not, welcome back. On today's video, like I mentioned, we're gonna be talking about the cost of living in Denver, Colorado area in 2022 with those four main categories. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash that notification bell to be alerted whenever I upload new videos. I appreciate the support. And of course, if you're thinking about moving out here to Denver or you live out here right now and you're thinking about buying a house, I'm a licensed realtor out here. I'd be happy to help you. I got people reaching out to me all the time from TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube asking to move out here and asking if I can help them find a place. Uh, so if you're looking to move out here or you need to find a place, let me know, happy to help. And also if you wanna see daily content, I post every single day on TikTok. I'll post my account below. I post everything about Denver, real estate, restaurants, hikes, things to do every weekend, anything you think about, about Colorado, I post about it, so follow me there. And with all that out of the way, let's jump into this. All right, let's first talk about housing, and I'm gonna talk about the cost to buy, but also the cost to rent in some different areas. And like I mentioned, keep in mind, these are gonna be your averages and medians throughout the entire Denver area. So some places will be more expensive, some places will be cheaper, some places will be that average or median. And if we start off with the average cost to buy a home out here, the average price right now, and this includes single family detached homes, townhouses and condos, so all the different types. The average price right now is about 675,000. That seems to be going down a little bit with the way the market's headed, but you can expect around there right now with the median price being about 575,000. So pretty large discrepancy there. Averages kind of pulled up by those higher end listings, whereas median is kind of a more accurate representation of what you can expect to purchase them out here. And if we wanna break it down a little bit further, the median price for a condo is about 370,000. The median price for a townhouse is about 490,000. And the median price for a single family detached home is about 686,000. So there are a lot of cheaper options out there. If you don't want a single family house, or maybe it's your first purchase and you're thinking about maybe a condo or a townhouse that could suit you better because they're a lot more affordable and a lot more attainable. And then jumping over to the rental prices, I got a lot of this information from Rent Cafe, so I'll post that information right here so you can see the different prices. But over the 16 different cities that were kind of pulled from uh, this information, you can see the average rent for a place out here in the Denver area is about $2,000. That's those 16 cities, but it's also about the same for the city of Denver itself. You can expect to pay about $2,000 or so a month for rent. And if you want to live in the heart of Denver itself and being those top neighborhoods that a lot of people are living in when they first move here or those younger millennials or older Gen Z's. The top 10 are all above $2,300 a month. So it is a little bit expensive to live out here, but some people think it's worth it. So that's why we still have people moving out here, but expect to pay somewhere from two to $2,300 a month for rent. And then if we jump over to transportation, we're gonna first talk about gas prices. These are kind of hard to talk about in a video that's gonna be on the internet forever potentially as gas prices change a lot. Uh, but as I've seen compared to some of the other West Coast states, especially California and even Arizona, the gas price out here a little bit cheaper. As of when I pulled the information for gas prices, uh, early September about, I'd say the first week of September or so, the average price in the seven county metro area, which is Adams County, Arapahoe County, Denver County, Douglas County, Jefferson County, Broomfield County, and Elbert County, the average gas price was about $3.60 with the Denver County itself being about $3.71. I just filled up the other day, this is the end of September about, and it was about, I wanna say 3.25 or so a gallon, so a little bit cheaper. And then keeping on the topic of your vehicle, let's jump over to the registration amount. So I'll post a picture of my current registration right now that's due for renewal, and show the price on that and the make model year, all that good stuff, so you can get an idea of what it costs. 
uh, but each county is going to be specific and a little bit different on how much you're going to be paying for your car registration especially if it's a new car versus you're doing a renewal so if you're curious about what yours will cost if you're moving here you can go to the county website you're moving to or planning to move to put in your information put in your car and you can potentially get an estimate of what it would be to register your car out here and that way you have an idea before you move out here and all that has to do if you have a car so your gas and your registration your main two items usually obviously you've got maintenance and tires and all that kind of stuff which doesn't change i would say drastically but let's say you don't have a car the denver area has a pretty decent light rail system that takes you from union union station downtown and pretty much spiders out to the rest of the denver area the light rail goes to the denver airport it goes out west towards golden goes up north uh, towards boulder not quite too boulder there's a different bus you can take to get there and then down south to Littleton and to ride the light rail a lot of people will go park at some of the outskirts uh, you know if they live in the suburbs but they want to go downtown go to a game get a drink whatever it is uh, so you can get some day passes or some one ride passes for as little as three bucks for the ride to get you downtown and back or wherever you're going and if you're planning to live outside of Denver but work in Denver but not want to drive or commute they also have monthly passes for about $114 a month so if you're planning on taking it you know probably three four times a day it could be worth it they also have other packages in between that you know three dollar one way ticket or the monthly uh, fee to pay and then also if you're active military you ride for free and there's also discounts for youth and seniors so a pretty good system to get you around and relatively inexpensive if you're only going to take it every now and then all right, the third thing I want to talk about is everyone's favorite topic, and that's taxes. And I'm talking about your property taxes, your state income tax, and your sales tax. And starting off with the property taxes, even though we have high property values, our property taxes are relatively low still compared to the national average. Our effective rate is about 0.49 or half a percent, while the national average is about 1.0 percent effective rate for your property taxes so for example i had a client just closed on a property uh, about two weeks ago or so the property was sold at about six hundred eighty thousand dollars the assessed taxes for the last year was about thirty eight hundred dollars i wouldn't be surprised if it goes up it might go up a little bit let's call it forty two hundred dollars a month or forty two hundred dollars a year not a month that'd be insane uh, so relatively low property taxes as compared to our property values out here as opposed to a place like texas where you've got you know maybe a five hundred thousand dollar house you're talking i don't know 10 12 grand in property taxes per year and then jumping over to our sales tax colorado has one of the lowest sales tax as a state in the united states is about 2.9 percent However, each county and each city will have its different local tax rates as well. On average though, for the entire state with the state income or state sales tax, sorry, and the city sales tax, we're looking at about 7.7% in the Denver metro area, probably closer to eight, but it's still not too bad. And then jumping over to your state income tax, which for a lot of you might be the most important thing to determine how much you're gonna be paying in state income tax, especially if you're coming from a place like California where you could have a rate up to 13.3%. Or maybe you want to know how much more you're going to be paying if you're coming from a place like Texas. We don't have a state income tax or Florida or whatever it is. So for Colorado, we have a flat tax system. So no matter what you make, whether it's a dollar or $10 million, you're paying the same flat rate, which right now is 4.55%. That came down from 4.63% last year. It was on the ballot. They, People in Colorado decided to lower it. And we actually have it on the ballot again this year to lower from 4.55 to, I believe, 4.4%. So very low state income taxes, flat rates. So you don't have to worry about your marginal rate going from, you know, like California going from 10% to 13%. It's 4% all around. It is what it is. That's what you're going to pay. All right. And lastly, your groceries and other food items. So... I'm not gonna drill down on each individual food item. I don't track how much a dozen eggs cost or a gallon of milk costs or your favorite cereal costs. But I will say on average, we are close to the national average for cost on those things. I will tell you the important thing though, a 12 pack of Coors Light or Coors Banquet is about 13 to $16. So that's something you wanna track probably, but the rest of them, they're probably pretty close to the average. You know, they fluctuate with the rest of the, the nation. So 
I don't think you'd expect to pay much more for groceries. And then jumping over to your restaurant, if you like going out a lot and maybe you wanna to go to a nice restaurant or just go to a normal chain restaurant or whatever it is, I'd say on average for a single, let's just say, you know, you're going on a date or you're with your wife or husband or just a friend or whatever it is, for your meal alone, you're probably looking at, if you have drinks as well, anywhere from, I wanna say maybe 30 to $50 for you alone. So that's your, you know, maybe an appetizer, an entree, and a drink. Uh, and then whoever you're with also gets something. Let's say there's two of you, could be looking at, you know, 80 to $100 for a full meal with appetizer, entree, and drink. So uh, I'd say it's probably relatively average for the, for the nation. Of course, you have your more expensive areas and your cheaper areas, um, but that's what you expect for your groceries and your restaurants. And there's a lot of different categories and things I didn't talk about in this video as it pertains to the cost of living out here in Denver. But like I said, about 70% of most people's income is tied up into those four main categories I wanted to touch on, especially out here in Colorado where our housing costs are well, well above the national average. And that's where it kind of becomes expensive to live out here. We don't have too high of gas or the transportation costs. Our groceries aren't more expensive than the rest of the nation. Uh, we have a flat income tax, very low flat income tax and very low effective property tax rates. So for the most part, most of your income will probably be tied up in housing, whether it's a rent or buy. So keep that in mind. But, you know, I hope this video is helpful. If you find value in it, go and drop a comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff below. Again, follow me on the other socials below. If you're curious about buying out here, moving out here, reach out. Happy to help. But that's all I got for you on this video. So I appreciate you watching and I'll catch you in the next one.